However, the first investor, because that investor went earlier, that investor only had to invest half as much, $5,000. Whereas the second investor had to double investment to catch up and to get the same results as the first investor. Now think about this. Welcome back. This is Ian from ppcian.com talking about dividend growth investing. I'm an investor who invests for dividends and cash flow. One day, my goal is to have a massive amount of dividend income that will cover all of my living expenses. Sometimes in the world of investing, it's not about what you do, but it's about what you avoid doing. So today, I want to go through five horrible, horrible mistakes that one can make in the world of dividend growth investing. So mistake number one is what I like to call and what a lot of people out there like to call the yield trap. A yield trap is a stock that pays a current dividend yield that is typically really high. It might catch your attention because it's a high yield. It's maybe 7%, 10%, maybe even more. And I personally fell for a yield trap back when I was a younger investor. I was still learning. I was still picking up the basics and I fell for a yield trap. It was a actually a uh, real estate investment trust, but it was a mortgage, mortgage real estate investment trust. So this was a company that did mortgage loans and this was back during the mortgage crisis. So this was a company that was doing a lot of aggressive mortgage loans. And I think at the time it was yielding like 14%. So I was like, Ian, that seems like a good idea. Why would I pick a stock yielding 3% when I can get one that's yielding 14%? Well, you know what? That stock ended up tumbling. Thankfully, I sold before losing too much money. But the fact of the matter is, yield traps are very, very horrible for dividend growth portfolios. So how can one go about avoiding a yield trap? Well, first and foremost, I like to buy the blue chip names, the companies that have been around forever that will continue to be around forever. I like to buy companies also that have a reasonable payout ratio. So typically I like a payout ratio in the 50% range. That means a company is taking about 50% of its earnings and distributing it out as dividend income to the investors. If the payout ratio is really high, like maybe it's 90% or 100%, and there are certain industries where this is the case. Like one, one industry, for example, are utilities. Regulated utilities tend to have a higher payout ratio. But just to, speaking in general here about, about let's say, consumer, consumer stocks, maybe consumer non-cyclical stocks, 50% payout ratio is great. If the company is paying out 100% of their earnings, that's oftentimes a signal that they are paying out too much. They're not saving enough money to invest in the company's future. They're not saving enough money in case hard times hit the company and they need the money to turn things around. And so payout ratio is a great way to avoid a yield trap. And I guess the other way is what I said before is just picking those names that you have heard of, you've grown up with. They're all around us. The Peter Lynch investing style, if you will, the Warren Buffett investing style, picking those household brands is one way to avoid a yield trap. When you kind of venture off and things start looking like, like they're too good to be true, or you're getting into just something you don't know a lot about. Like I, I, don't, I, I still don't know, and I certainly didn't at the time, know much about mortgage REITs, a mortgage real estate investment trusts. I didn't know about that. I had no business investing in that industry. And so I fell for a yield trap. And that is a, it's a horrible mistake that a dividend growth investor can make because for dividend growth investing to work, one wants to compound their dividends and their, their results over a long period of time, such as 10, 20, 30, or even more years. And if one falls for a yield trap, it takes everything off course. And it loses capital, the dividend isn't sustainable. It's, it's completely against the whole idea of dividend growth investing, which is buying a stock and never having to sell it, never wanting to sell it. So that is horrible mistake number one. What is another horrible mistake that someone could make 
when they're just starting out or maybe they've even been this in this for a while and they're investing for dividends. Another mistake that someone could make is not starting now. This has been a theme in a few of my recent videos. If you checked out the one on investing for teenagers, you may want to do that even if you're not a teenager because there's a lot of good insights in there. One of them is the value of time. Teenagers have a lot of time ahead of them, which is pure magic in, in the stock market because stock market and dividend growth investing is all about compounding results over time. So let me explain this through some numbers. Let's say, hypothetically, we can achieve a 7% return on investment per year over the long haul, 7%. And I'm not looking here at, at dividends. I'm not here looking here at capital appreciation. I'm looking at everything. I'm not looking at things in isolation. I'm looking at everything all in 7%. I think that's kind of conservative, to be honest with you, because I think dividend growth investors, and I've experienced this myself, can do better than that, especially when one buys at really good valuations. But anyways, let's just say 7% compounded over time. One investor starts early. That investor has 30 years ahead of them. The other investor starts a little bit late. That investor waits another 10 years, has 20 years ahead of them. Investor one invests $5,000. Investor two invests twice as much money, $10,000. If we compound $5,000 over 30 years, that end at 7% return, that ends up becoming $38,061. Check this out. If we take the 10,000, twice as much money invested, we compound it over 20 years, it becomes $38,697. So the fact of the matter is the end result is about the same and both end results are good. So that's part of the story here too, is it's never too late. You've got you know, decades ahead or even you know, one decade ahead, there's a lot that can happen by compounding money over time. So both investors end up in the same situation, which is a great situation. However, the first investor, because that investor went earlier, that investor only had to invest half as much, $5,000. Whereas the second investor had to double investment to catch up and to get the same results as the first investor. Now think about this. What if the first investor had $10,000 and didn't, do, didn't stop at five, kept adding and adding and adding that whole 10 years where the first, second investor was just waiting and was, had to later play catch up? That is a wonderful strategy for dividend growth investing is to get in early and to make sacrifices in one's life early and to get the money working and having that time, which is more powerful in the world of investing even than money invested, working in one's favor. So a horrible mistake that someone can make in the world of dividend growth investing is just waiting too long. Personally, in my situation, I don't really care where the stock market is at. It's up really high, it's really low. Sure, I like a market where the valuations are lower and it's, it's um, overall the bargains are better. Obviously, right now in 2017, the market has run up a lot. The valuations are not great. But generally speaking, if I have money to invest, I will invest it because I want that money working for me. Whether the market is high or low is not necessarily relevant to me because my time frame is 30 plus years. And so 30 years from now, I'm pretty certain that the current market, whether it's high or low, is going to be irrelevant. What's going to be relevant to me is my dividend income and my cash flow and my passive income. So horrible mistake number two. Let's talk about another horrible mistake that someone could make in the world of dividend growth investing. Getting bored and giving up. Dividend investing is not exciting. It's not like trading. It's not like penny stocks. It's not like buying the latest trend, buying into the latest technology. No, it can get boring. You're picking, a, picking stocks, oftentimes blue chip stocks. Everyone knows what they are. You're making periodic investments over time and it can get boring. It's a waiting game. The hardest part about dividend growth investing, well, there's a, there's a few hard parts, but I would say the hardest is making it. And I'm talking making it not just 10 years, but 20 or 30 years. Your future self will thank your present self, but it takes persistence and time. Most people, I shouldn't say most people, but many people out there 
do not have the willpower. They just don't have the patience. So a mistake that someone can make is just giving up. I'm not seeing my results. It's been five years. I, I haven't got anywhere. It's been, been six years. I haven't got anywhere. I'm going to give up. I'm going to start trading or I'm just going to spend my money. I'm going to try penny stocks because this dividend stuff, it's not getting me anywhere. It takes time. It takes persistence and dedication over the long term. Another horrible mistake that someone can make, not controlling their budget. This is a mistake that I struggle with to this day. The reason I struggle with this is one, I like nice things, but two, I live in the Bay Area, Silicon Valley. It's expensive to live here. And so budgeting is key and controlling one's budget. It's about making sacrifices and this is hard. A lot of people don't do this. They just spend and then they invest whatever's left over. It has to be the other way around. One has to pay themselves first and invest money first and then use what's left over to live and maybe splurge a little bit on some nice things. Controlling the budget is key. And here's the thing. It doesn't matter how much you make. You could make 50,000 a year, you could make 25,000 a year, you could make 200,000 a year, you could make a million dollars a year. It's all about the percentage of what can be saved and deployed in the market. If one is saving 10% of their income and deploying that in the market, in my opinion, that is not enough. That's what all of these financial gurus out there say, hey, it's better than nothing. That's for sure. Everyone's got to start somewhere. And if all you can save is 10%, I don't want to discourage anyone. I think that's great. And there's been times in my life, even in recent years, where expenses go up and that month I may have nothing to invest. Or that year I may be very low and maybe I only put in a small amount of money that year. But the fact of the matter is, is the goal, 10% should not be the goal. 10% is good because it creates momentum and it's a starting point, but the goal should be, in my opinion, somewhere between 30 and 50%. If someone can save 30 to 50% of their money every month, get it in the market, get it working for them, there are two things that happen here. One, it's a budget. It shows, it shows yourself that you know how to budget and quite frankly, that you can achieve early financial freedom quicker because if you can live off less money, you need less passive income to support your lifestyle, which means you accelerate it. You get to financial freedom quicker, which gives one many, many cool options. And I know the goal of, of a lot of people watching is achieving financial freedom, passive income that covers living expenses. The other thing obviously that happens when one can save 30 to 50% of their income and get in the market is one just gets more money in the market. More money sooner is better. Here's one way I like to look about it. It's not that you're not going to live a luxurious lifestyle or enjoy some of those things maybe you want to enjoy. It's all about delaying gratification, pushing it off. Make some sacrifices in the short run for long-term results. And so a big mistake, a horrible mistake is just spend, 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 invest what's left over. It should be the other way around. Invest, live on a low budget, delay the gratification. So another horrible mistake that someone could make, following the crowd. So I made this mistake. I talked about this in another video. I actually made it even in recent years. And I read a lot of blogs. I follow a lot of blogs on the internet. I bought BHP Billiton. I lost some money on it. It was a mistake. I didn't have conviction in this. I had no business buying this stock. I bought it because everyone else was talking about it. Sure, I did my research and I, but, and I only blame myself. I never blame other people. But what I'm saying is a big mistake that dividend growth investors can make is following the crowd. Better than doing that, and I did a YouTube video on this, I'll link to it in the description below, is to follow your heart. Make your own stock selections. Find your own stocks. Don't listen to the crowd. That's one of the reasons I don't talk about individual stocks too much on this channel, although if you watch my videos, you can piece together quite a few of my positions. But following the crowd is a tragic mistake. So before we close out today, a few things. One. I want to let you guys know that I am so thrilled with all the people who have subscribed, the comments, the likes. It means the world to me. And in fact, my subscription uh, count keeps going up. 
And my goal in the short run is 1,000 subscribers. Long run, I want to get to 100,000. I realize that the production quality of these videos is not where it needs to be. I have aspirations actually to build a studio in my garage and to greatly increase the production quality of these videos. So any support you're able to send my way just through a like, a comment, a subscription, ideas for videos, it means the world to me because it gets me to my goals quicker. And one goal I set for myself is, hey Ian, if you can get to a thousand subscribers, you're gonna you're gonna build that studio. You're gonna invest some money and make it happen. And so thank you for hanging in here as well while the production quality is kind of in, in startup mode. And I hope that the quality of the content surpasses the beginner stage production value of these videos. That's my hope. But long term, my goal is to have not only the content, but the great production quality as well. And, and certainly if you've been watching the channel for a while, you've probably seen at least it's evolved in the right direction. Another just kind of per personal piece of news I want to bring up today. I'm going to pick this up. My family and I, my wife's son and I, recently donated money to a charity called Musicians On Call. We donated $500. And this was a larger char charitable donation for us. It was a big deal. And the reason I'm highlighting this is I believe in life that one of my greater purposes is not just financial freedom. Obviously financial freedom is amazing, but one of the things I want to challenge all of you out there is if you're a dividend investor, you want to achieve financial freedom, you want to live off of your dividend stocks, I challenge you to find a greater purpose in addition or multiple greater purposes in addition just to the finance side of things. Like find out your why. Why are you doing this? Obviously Freedom is amazing, but there have to be other reasons as well. And you might not know them right now, but I encourage you to find them over time. So I want to share this with you. I'm just going to bring it up here kind of close. This is a backstage pass. This is from Musicians on Call. And because we made this donation, they sent us this token of their appreciation. This really meant the world to me. It's something I keep on my desk. It's something that motivates me every day. It shows me, hey, Ian, this is why you're doing it. The more money you can earn through your job, the more money you can earn through your, your endeavors, your marketing, your consulting, the more money, Ian, you can earn through dividends, it is going to allow you not only to get to financial freedom quicker, but to do more stuff like this, more charity. And so just something worth noting. And here's something else I want to point out today. I have a subscriber. His name is Dividends for Hope. Check it out. He'll probably comment below. Dividends for Hope, if you're watching, please comment below. I encourage all of you to check out Dividends for Hope YouTube channel. Dividends for Hope is building a dividend fund where the dividends in perpetuity will be used for charity. And the members of the community, the people actually who donated the money, get to choose where the money goes. I love Dividends for Hope. I love the idea. I've donated twice now. Dividends for Hope. Comment below. Everyone here, if you like my channel, you're going to like Dividends for Hope too. And I, I encourage you to check it out, whether you make a donation or not. I think it's a great YouTube channel and a great cause. And this is just something I think is great, is this whole world of charity. So Ian Lopuck, ppcian.com. A friendly disclaimer, this is not investment advice. I am not a licensed investment advisor. This video is just for fun and entertainment. If you do want to go out and invest capital, please do see a licensed financial advisor first. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next dividend investing video.